Hola, buenas tardes, bienvenidos todos. Eh, esto es Condos One, ya sabéis, 100 webinars en 100 días, lo vamos a conseguir. Además, estamos apretando y estamos consiguiendo que sean unos webinars de calidad, presentados por los mejores ponentes, entrevistando a las personas más punteras, las que realmente nos hacen impulsar todos nuestros planes, todas nuestra, nuestras ganas de aprender sobre este mundo del marketing online, de los negocios en, dentro del 2.0, de las nuevas formas y los nuevos modos profesionales dentro del 2.0. Y hoy, viernes a las 3, pues la verdad es que tenemos el, el placer de tener a un ponente internacional, alguien que nos, nos especialmente nos gustaba tenerlo aquí, Queríamos buscar a alguien de SEO, una persona de SEO reconocida internacionalmente y lo hemos encontrado. Y yo creo que no hemos podido encontrar a nadie mejor que Marcus Tandler, que es el cofundador y director de OnPage.org. Es una página, la tengo por aquí, de SEO, que realmente es muy, muy útil, está muy bien. Nos ha llamado mucho la atención y ya desde todos los expertos de SEO que tenemos en Cuondos eh, se ha puesto ya el punto de mira en esta herramienta, con lo cual nos apetecía mucho que nos explicasen un poquito cómo sacarle partido y de qué iba onpage.org. Tenemos aquí a Marcus Tandler que su Twitter es mediador, le podéis, le podéis seguir y bueno, voy a proceder ahora a saludarle. Tenemos también a Alicia porque sabed que este webinar es en inglés. Vamos a hacerlo en inglés. Muy bien. Alicia, hola. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Nos escucháis? Sí, muy bien. Os, os escuchamos perfectamente. ¿Qué todo por ahí? Pues, pues muy bien. Ya empieza a llegar el frío. Me imagino que por allí también estamos... Bueno, ya estamos hasta... total. Muy bien. Eh, está Marcus por ahí. Marcus, hello. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hola. <laughs> I think it looks a little bit, it would be a little bit chilly over here. Uh, ah, ok. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, 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 after two weeks of Oktoberfest, uh, this is quite normal attire in Munich. Oh, that's great. Bueno, tenemos a tenemos a, aquí a Alicia que nos va a ayudar también un poco a la hora de traducir las preguntas que nos queráis hacer. Recordad, tenéis un panel de preguntas, aprovechad que está Marcus aquí para hacerle todas las preguntas y todas las dudas que tengáis. Bueno, chicos, eh, I'm going to make you the presenter of the webinar, so, ok, let's okay. wait. We can see your, your display. ¿Ya lo podéis ver? Ok, they already see that. Ok, perfecto. Sí, ya está. So go on. Muy bien. And we are here and seeing you with a, a lot of attention. <laughs> Great. Perfect, perfect. Genial. <laughs> so, uh, um, oh, I can't move this yeah. forward. Weird. You can? No, I cannot. It's okay, maybe. Yeah. All right, whatever. So, uh, yeah, thanks for your interest uh, in onpage.org. So, um, want to do an overview of the software, what you can actually do with the software. Uh, I think we got about half an hour. Normally, we do these webinars running for 90 minutes. So, and still, we only get 5% through the stuff we can actually do. Um, but whatever. Um, I hope we can still give you some impression of what our tool is uh, capable of doing. Um, so for this webinar, we chose to use uh, MediaMarkt.de. Uh, As I've learned, it's also a big brand yeah. in Spain, so you guys exactly. know MediaMarkt. Um, since I can't speak Spanish, I was still crawling the German version, uh, but it's all zeros and ones, right? So it's all bits and bytes. Uh, it's that it really doesn't matter the language. I think um, we can do this with any URL. Can you see the the questions if they are writing something right now? No, I can't. Okay, because maybe they, they ask something to us. Si tenéis alguna pregunta, eh, no dudéis en mandarnos una. Vamos, escribir. Una 
we can go on. Oh, uh, okay. Just so you will let us know if yeah, there's any questions, of course. Okay. So if you have any questions, just shoot, please. Yeah. Um, because you might be the only person uh, asking the question that everybody yeah. is thinking the question, so it would be great if you would also uh, raise your voice. Um, so here we are in the dashboard. Uh, by the way, this is our um, on-page org Zoom. We actually are um, already in beta for our B3, so basically our third version uh, of onpage.org, and we are rolling that out right now. I'm still going to show you, so to speak, the old version. Um, because I want to have, I want to show you guys the stable version as right now. The V3 is still being in beta. Um, I don't want to confuse you with uh, any of the new stuff. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna do this with Zoom. So what we did is we crawled um, MediaMarkt.de. We are just like crawler-based tool, just like Simu or Screaming Frog that you might be using. Um, I've been an avid user of uh, Screaming Frog um, and Simu for. Well, forever. Um, but what I always hate is basically um, I'm running those reports and always end up um, working in Excel, and I hate Excel. So we uh, basically, back in the days when we started doing this two or three years ago, we did it for ourselves um, to give us the possibility to work with that stuff uh, without using Excel. Um, and you're going to see what I mean by that. Um, of course, we have found a couple more URLs, in this case 133,000, but we only crawled 50,000 of those. Um, this is the normal pro account size. As you may know, on Pitchfork is completely free for websites with less than 100 URLs, exactly. and uh, 50,000 is, uh, so to speak, uh, the the, the size one. for the, the, the basically small one, the yeah. pro account package, and also our um, most bought package on pitch.org. Um, because most of the times you just don't need to crawl everything, maybe you have a, a blog, a forum, um, yeah. and that you might not even have to crawl because all these mistakes are basically um, in the template. So if you fix uh, an error in the template, it will be fixed in all of the URLs, and so you don't need to crawl the whole forum or whatever, basically you can choose what you want to crawl uh, with the crawl settings, you can do whatever you want, you can even do a custom robots.txt um, to give us, you can say, okay, only the, this subdomain and only this directory, you can uh, do whatever you want, it's very easy to set up. Um, and also, which is I think quite notable, that you can also crawl um, uh, protected uh, directories, so maybe you're doing a relaunch and you uh, block it with, H, uh, with um, uh, if you, and you block it on the server side, you can just give us um, the the credential, the login credentials, and then we can also crawl in there um, to basically crawl your website before the relaunch, correct all the errors before it actually goes live. Um, a tool that is actually quite uh, well received with uh, with SEO agencies. Um, we can basically crawl really everything. The only thing we can't crawl is local hosts. So if you got the website only on your computer, of course we cannot crawl this, but besides local hosts, we can really crawl everything. I mean, this is our main business, so uh, this is this is the stuff. Um, so what we do after we have crawled all these URLs, we, we show you all potential for errors where we find that, uh, as well as potential for optimization. We, uh, we cluster those in first dates first, making progress for the improvements, uh, as well as some fine tuning. Um, basically, um, giving you the stuff where you like the, which is very easy to change, but yields a high impact on your search rankings. Stuff like title tag length and meta description lengths, as you all know, title tag and meta description forms the snippet. And SEO is not about uh, becoming number one for a certain keyword. It's about people actually clicking on your results and maybe you you know ordering in your shop or leaving the email address for your newsletter, whatever. And this yields a high impact. Everybody can change that. Even with your WordPress distribution, you can change your titles and descriptions, and it yields a great impact if you have a very clickable snippet. Let me say something. <laughs> Sorry. Of course, of course. <laughs> Os quería decir que estáis viendo el panel de control está todo en inglés, porque es la versión antigua. Estamos ahora mismo en la versión 3, la beta, que va a salir dentro de unas semanas y va a estar todo en español, así que no os preocupéis que esto solamente es ahora, dentro de un par de semanas estará todo ya acabado. Para That's exactly what she, she said. I have no idea what she said. But yeah. So let's jump into the tool real quick to show you uh, basically how it works. Um, so our thing is to give you complete flexibility over your crawl. We want to give you the, the most flexibility you could have um, over the data we crawl from your website. Um, and let me show you what I mean by that. So in this 
case, uh, try to take a pixel length. Uh, as you all know, it's not about character length anymore these days. It's about because I want to make sure that my search snippet is the same on desktop, on tablets, on mobile devices, and this is mm -hmm. why I'm optimizing for pixel lengths. And in this case, I actually see um, that there's 1,100 of the URLs that we have crawled that are well beyond the appropriate pixel lengths. So if I just want to work on these, all I need to do is just click on here, and now I get a live uh, result and only the 1,100 sites that actually have too long uh, of a title. And we show this with this red bar here. So basically, we show you where Google would cut off your title tag. So in this case, we'll probably do an X dot dot dot, or maybe even cut off from the two doing a dot dot dot. So if there's something very important back here, you should definitely move it forward or rewrite the title overall. Um, I know working with 1,100 pages is still a lot. And, um, really need to optimize for. So the first thing I would actually do is find sites that are actually indexable because there's probably a lot of stuff in there which is not indexable due to uh, robots.txt, uh, uh, robots.txt, due to a no index tag, maybe it even has a canonical tag set on it, basically uh, transferring the juice to another URL. So I really want only the ones that are indexable because I don't want to work on title tags that are actually not in going in Google's index that we would just wasted my time. So all I need to do now is basically click on indexable and you can see that it uh, changes the result. It wasn't a lot. Um, so let's do another thing because I see a lot of them that are not included in the sitemap and I can, I can probably say, okay, those that are included in the sitemap are probably um, um, of more importance to me. So all I need to do is go in here, filters, um, I go to sitemap, inclusion check, and it says pages included in sitemap XML. So it's and close. Boom, it's actually only three pages now. This is not very easy to uh, optimize those title tags. But if you see what we've done now here is it's all that are too long, only indexable, and only included in the sitemap XML. Maybe let's take another example. Um, to show you how it works. We could also say, okay, show me only the ones that are included, uh, that are crawlable by robots.txt, show me only the ones that have a status of 200, show me only the ones in German, so, or from Germany. And this also, really, just click on here, and now I get all the ones that are indexable, too long title tag, and also in German, um, which are, again, most every, every one of those. Um, let's say only the ones that are pointing the canonical to them themselves, they're not pointing the canonical uh, somewhere different. Um, you see canonical targets point self. Now it's only 841 again. Um, and now let's say, okay, I want only the ones um, with, with Sony in the title because now today I'm only want to work on Sony's pages. So all I need to do here is just click on the Sony in the title. And it's 42 pages now. As you can see, too long title tag, indexable, in German, canonical pointing to itself, and also Sony in the title. And now it's only 42, and I can go down here, and I can just say, okay, export this uh, into Excel. Oh, okay, we just, this is just for today, so I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this will be up again. Uh, or I can just copy all URLs, copy and paste, put it into Skype, and say, hey, you know, please work on, on those uh, 42 um, title tags. Uh, maybe give it to my other in-house SEO or whatever. Um, so as you can see, it's very, very flexible working with these filters. You can make as many filters as you want. Basically, every attribute we find can be set as a filter. So for example, we have a lot of um, the publishing houses working with our software, um, and they like uh, doing the uh, using the segment XML last modification date, saying, okay, show me everything that has been included in the sitemap yesterday to see all the articles that went live um, from this newspaper um, yesterday and to see if everything is correct on these uh, pages that were live yesterday. Um, you can also say, show me only the ones that have more than five internal links. Uh, show me only pages that have um, the this AdSense ID or have more than 500, uh, 500 words or whatever. So you see the world is really your oyster. You can really filter whatever you want. You can make as many filters as you want. You can't break us by using too many filters. Um, the only thing that might be happening is just you filter too much and now you don't have any results anymore. And if you found a, a combination that you may be working on um, 
more um, like like each and every week or every month. You can also always go in here and save this, saying this is my stuff, and and just save it. And you can load this exact filter combination at any time. You can uh, and, and save as many filters as you like, so you can always jump back to this exact filter result um, working in any of the other 160 reports. Um, another thing I want to show you what you can do with this is also, let's take a little bit out of here, um, I can also say, okay, this is a lot of pages, I want only all pages that are within mediamark.de slash mcs slash product, only those pages, and all you need to do is click on here, and you see how it changes in real time, and basically saying um, these are only pages that are within MCS slash product. Maybe this is a white label, maybe this is a completely other in-house SEO, so I can't be working with slash MCS slash product, so all I need to do here is just do a minus in front of it, say okay, and now I get all the pages that are not in mediamark.de slash MCS slash product, as you can see here, this is a different uh, subdomain here, in this case it's slash market, in the slash, slash p, so I'm only getting, getting those, I can remove the pixelates to get a little bit of a bigger result. Um, and this works really with everything, so basically you can click on everything um, you see on here, and um, you can jump uh, to the to the respective result. And you can even supersize that with our snippet tracking, you find that a content body, so with snippet tracking, you can see um, if Google Analytics um, is integrated uh, on those pages, um, and also which code, as well as Google AdSense, which MediaMarkt.de obviously doesn't have. But you can also set up custom snippets, um, and this could be really anything. So you can put in, you can copy and paste any snippet in here, and basically we will show you where, on which pages this snippet is actually on, uh, and uh, which pages are missing the snippet. So this could be, this could be, for example, the uh, a web track or Omniture code, or this could also be the Facebook like button. Um, so I'm copying and pasting here the, the code for the Facebook like button, and now it can show you all the pages that have the Facebook like button and all the pages that don't have a Facebook like button. Um, this doesn't necessarily need to be code. This could be any string, so this could be a name, an email address, a telephone number. Um, so let's say someone is leaving the company, I can search for his name, I can search for his telephone number, search for his email, show me all the instances in my web pages where this name, email, or telephone number is shown so I can actually remove this. We actually just moved offices, uh, we moved to a new office, so we ran a report office address on our website to actually see if our alt office address is still anywhere on our cell website. This could also be a negative, uh, maybe like with something like Viagra, because maybe I have a very popular forum and people are spamming me with Viagra spam, so in this case I would do a negative with Viagra so I get alerted um, every time uh, I have uh, a page which has Viagra on them to see, hey, did you was this you? Did you really want to do this? Or was this maybe uh, somebody injecting um, some micro stuff on your site? Um, as you can see, you can just save this. And the great thing is that as soon as you have uh, um, created that custom snippet, it will also show up within your filters set. So you can, you see down here, snippet trick in Facebook. So what I can do now is say, okay, show me only the pages that are in of all that have Sony in the title, that are within slash MCS slash whatever, and also don't have the Facebook like button, right? So you can see what you can do with this is really like endless possibilities because you can really have everything, um, uh, you can really filter by everything to whatever, how big your website is, you will always get to the most actionable result um, that, that, that you actually need. Um, so I think um, you, get, you get the hang of it, um, uh, how this works. And, and, and you can see how fast this is, you know, how fast we are actually um, um, basically uh, uh, like finding this result set. It's, everything is very fast. And even with our biggest clients, which have uh, over 20 million pages, it goes like this. And this is really what we wanted to achieve. Uh, and especially in this case, uh, with over 20 million pages, it's uh, over 20 million pages, it's 100 million of uh, images, and it's also 1.8 billion uh, links co coming together to over four terabytes of data. 
Um, and we want to give the possibility to work with these four terabytes of data almost in real time. And this yeah. is, I think, pretty phenomenal since uh, four terabytes of data couldn't even fit on a hard drive uh, two or three years ago. Uh, and now you can always uh, work in real time with that stuff. So we're really doing big data. Uh, and as I just said, we are also saving the whole link graph. And you can also, you can always jump directly into the link juice report of any URL. So I can just jump in here and I see all the redirects pointing to that URL, all the canonicals referencing this URL, all the internal links um, linking to that URL, all rel prep next if it is used uh, on your site, um, and also, of course, the external link targets um, that are linked out from this domain as well as the internal link targets. And all I need to do now is basically click on the two and two links that are pointing to that URL. It's actually three, that's funny. Um, because I think the no. one is a duplicate. Yeah. Um, so you can see this URL is linking to that URL with that anchor text um, and uh, and basically also showing you with the OPR. You can also see the link flow with MediaMarkt here. They're doing this a little bit poorly. So this is why it's a, yeah. it's a zero. Uh, it's a very top-down uh, approach, but that's a whole different story, and I think we can't uh, approach into that after uh, with just 30 minutes. Um, but this is always very nice because if I want to get rid of this page, right, the Sony Nickel Metal Hybrid Accus, um, I would need to go to these three pages and basically say, in this case, I would go copy all URLs, say copy and paste, hey, please remove that link from those, those pages. Um, and by the way, we're not only showing you the link juice to any URL, we're also showing you all the references. In this case, there's no, no reference. Um, but uh, to remove a, a link or basically to whatever you want to do with it, also if you want to redirect it wherever, I also need to know all the references. So this could be a canonical. This could be uh, referenced as a, uh, as a translation with the hreflang tag. This could be a JavaScript link. This could be referenced in the sitemap or whatever. So basically, all references where we find this particular URL in your source code. So if you want to get rid of anything, you really find all the instances um, in this single page inspector. Um, and this comes quite handy if we're working with status codes. So for example, um, here we see that we have 89 pages that are sending a client error. Um, and we show you all the links pointing to that URL. We show you other references. As I said, this could also be uh, canonicals, href lines, or JavaScript links, or whatever. Um, also canonicals, this would show up in here. For example, here, if to this URL, you have one redirect pointing to that 404 page. That shouldn't happen either. And all I always need to do is really just go in here. For example, here, this, this URL here, which is 404, has three links to it. And all I need to do is just click on the three links. And I immediately get the three links that are pointing to that URL, which uh, seems to be broke. So let's open up that URL real quick. So and it says Panasonic. So it actually has three different links. So, no, that's a different URL because this one's working. <laughs> this one's working. Ah, uh, here. Ah, uh, so yeah. here, the fact that we're in 404 error, you can see it up here. Yeah. Uh, it sends a 404. Um, and as you can see, so it's very easy to find all the URLs pointed to that broken link. And I can just go in here and say, copy all URLs. Hey, please fix this link. You, you <laughs> or was somebody error. else, no? Yeah, not you. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm not doing this shit. Um, um, but it's always very easy to just open up the URL. I can see the, it's, it's linked to with Blitzgeräte. So I immediately know where to find it and where um, probably this mistake happened. It's probably with the umlaut. Uh, in here, which uh, shows the 404 error. Um, so, so that's very easy. That's very cool that we save the whole internal link graph because that's how you can work with it. Um, we also, of course, uh, we are also checking your link targets. Um, for example, here I got a lot of a uh, lot of link targets that are actually pointing to a client error, which is not good. Also, redirect targets. 
Um, so you don't want to have a redirect ending up on a 404 page. That always sucks. But we also find redirect change with that thing because this basically we have 40, 41 redirects that are coming via redirect. So all I need to do is click on here and let's see if we have something. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's take this one. Okay, for example, here's the 301 redirect. Yeah, but that's okay. So, okay, redirect, mark our door. Let's try this one real quick. Yeah, perfect. Classic example. Yeah. So you see the mediamarkt.de uh, slash market slash apple 301 redirects to mediamarkt.de MCS shops market apple HTML and this one redirects to mediamarkt.de DE shop market apple HTML and that's just that's just poor web mastering because I want to do so from that page that actually links to this URL and basically say okay go to this URL without having those two redirects with it. Because, you know, especially in the mobile internet age, it's all about latency, right? So somebody surfing with this mobile phone on my page has to call up this URL, 301, go to this URL, 301, go to this URL. This could be one, one or two seconds maybe, um, which basically has a slower um, result or maybe resulting in somebody jumping back to the search result, go to your competitor. So you really want to get rid of this stuff. Um, just as well, Google doesn't like it either. Um, and it's just unnecessary because it's your website and you can just get rid of those very easily. So in this case, I would go in here, open up the link juice report because I want to find all URLs that link to MediaMarkt, Mark Apple to go uh, to to change that link to the 301, 301 uh, to the actually target page uh, that is sending the 200. So I would go in here, the 185 links, and again I would point out to my um, to my um, other than house SEO, hey, please change this link uh, to the other link and uh, yeah, crisis averted. Um, yeah, of course, we can do a gazillion things um, uh, with Opage.org, as you see the title tag. I just like jumped through a couple of those, the description links, uh, showing where it's not set. You should definitely set the description. You don't want Google to do this, um, which this is too long or too short. Most of the cases, all fine, so good. You can also check your canonicals. Of course, the canonical tag use, for example, in here, they're pointing to different hosts. That's why we have this in red. You should definitely uh, canonicals uh, going to a different host. In this case, Uncoupled Media Mark DE is going to flip for new DE. So if I'm going to Google, saying Uncoupled Media Mark, I can actually I can actually see flip for new DE in here, and also in the title tag uh, here, so you can see the canonical um, is is good. Why do they want to do this? But in this case, it's it's right. We can also show invalid canonicals. Um, so if you're linking to another URL as well as discrepancies, so if you have inconsistent canonical settings because you can set it in the header as well as in the meta, they should be at least identical and never different. Um, Roberts attribute translation, so if you have a multilingual website, in this case they only have a German website, so it doesn't make any sense, but I could actually see, um, you know, all translations and if I'm working with the HR point tag, if I have implemented it correctly. Um, well, also checking for um, duplicate content, uh, for example. So in this case, we have 24 pages that have over nine duplicates. So check this out real quick. Um, for example, this one here. You have Apple iPad Air Wi-Fi, 128 gigs, 33 pages that are duplicate content. So again, I just click on the 33, and I get all pages with high risk of duplicate content, and in this case, it, it looks very easy. So I'm opening up this URL, open up this URL to see if we have done a good job with that, discovering that. And you can see this is basically the same page. Everything that changes is up here, the 16 gig and 16 gig here, changing to 32 gig. And this is really the only two instances that are changing on that URL. So this is definitely a high risk of duplicate content, um, and uh, you can see this. You can, you can see that this, uh, the thing is working. Um, also with images, we can show you um, all the images you're using on your web page. Maybe you're using a CDN, um, and, uh, and some images are not that right. In this case, everything's okay. You can also see the alpha 
large attributes. Um, there's a 23,000 other attributes missing, so if I'm optimizing for Google image search, I would definitely check out those um, to see if they might have, might need an alt tag to also be able to rank in the Google image search. Um, we can show you uh, with links, uh, of course, for example, domains, there's like the link from domain command on Bing, so I show you all the URLs that you are linking out to, in this case, MediaMarkt.de. In this case, uh, for example, they are linking to uh, uh, to inwebs.com on elf uh, on the eleven uh, website uh, eleven web pages. Um, and let's say I want to get rid of this URL because maybe it expired and some evil SEO picked it up and now he's spreading malware. So I want to find all the instances that where I'm linking to inwebs.com. And this is actually a very uh, heavy task uh, without that tool because. Um, it's hard to find out, especially if I link with a different anchor text. So in this case, I just click on the 11. And I get all the 11 URLs that are linking to inwebs.com. And as you can see also on whichever URL on inwebs.com plus different anchor text. So this is what I meant by uh, it's very hard to find if I'm not linking out to the URL, if I'm linking out to different URLs. And in this case, it's very easy because you show you all instances where you're linking out to any URL on inwebs.com that you might want to get rid of. Um, I reckon the links is a report to help you. It's like sort of a breadcrumb report um, to see if you're linking to your own directory, your parent directory, um, or not even to any directories at all. Basically, seeing if, uh, if you're having a good uh, juice go to all your websites and not linking just top down um, Stuff so if you have breadcrumbs, for example, this will help very much with this hierarchical links report. In MediaMarkt's case, they actually do it quite poorly. Um, so it's basically shift flows down the hill linking structure. So they you pour in uh, the page rank and on top, and then it basically pours down, trickles down uh, to another thing. And this is not good because, especially with the e commerce side, you also want to have the turtle link hubs, so to speak, or to to topical hubs for a specific topic um, that are also very juicy to be able to rank in the search results. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff. We also measure your performance, uh, the load times of, of, your, um, of your pages um, that we crawl up to the, or down to the time the first byte um, to see where there might be um, some problems with some URLs. Um, and uh, yeah, just everything else. I think when you when you understand how how you can work with the filters, um, if you understand that you always can use this action button to uh, go into the inspector or deep dive into the link juice report, I think you can try all these other more than 160 reports, and um, what about you'll find your way. Um, yeah, I wanted to show two two more things. I don't know where we are in time right now. Oh, I'll be in time almost. Um, I hope I'm not, um, I'm not taking too long. But yeah. No, no problem. You can go on. You can go on explaining the tool. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so two more um, like unique tools I want to show you real quick because you've seen Zoom, which is pretty much the pro product, um, and you have basically you can crawl uh, extensively crawl one particular URL with focus. You can do a real time. Um, a real-time single-page analysis. Um, so, and this could be any URL. So, it really doesn't matter um, that I've used MediaMarkt.de in my account. It could be really any URL. Um, so, let's go to, for example, Deutsche Bahn uh, .com. Uh, Deutsche Bahn uh, is a travel operator. Or what you say? Como Renfe en España, vaya. Okay. Um, it's probably going to say that it's redirects to another. Like this. And redirects to this is very nice. Okay, wow. now this is the real URL. Okay, uh, as you can see, um, it could be any URL. It can be as many URLs as you want. Um, and you can get, make a real time, uh, a single page analysis in real time. Um, so, like when you have a very big website with a million of pages and you're using Zoom, and maybe I just change one URL and I want to really see if everything that I change is going to work out correctly, or maybe my PPC guy comes in and says, hey, I got this new PPC landing page that's going live today. Is it all right? 
formerly with focus, I would have with uh, with zoom, I would need to recrawl the whole size to actually see if this one single URL is correctly. So this is why we invented focus to give you the possibility to check any URL in real time. Um, and really see uh, all the stuff that's going wrong. There's some errors on this page as well as uh, warnings, and we are very comprehensive on this. And you can see, well, let's go through some of the results here. So everything's fine here. Canonical was set. Page inheritance is okay. Okay, now we see here that um, the description is missing, which is which really sucks, right? So this is why the Google preview looks like this. It's not good. Google would actually go in, would do it by themselves, and some of the times it's just not working out that, that good, so you definitely should use a description in this case. Um, um, to see how hard this text is uh, being able to read, we do an automatic TF-IDF analysis, so basically extracting the 10 um, like the 10 best keywords, like the, the, the 10 strongest signals this URL is actually sending to Google. Um, I think we're going to do the TF IDF tool uh, in a minute. Yeah. So get a little bit more deep dive into this. Also the headline concept. So in this case we can see um, they don't, they're missing an H1. So when they're starting off with H2, I'm not saying you have to have one H1 and two H2s and whatever. It's not about that. It's having a consistent uh, and consistent online if you're using it for your headline concept. In this case, it's not good because you're missing out uh, on the opportunity of using the H1. Um, keyword usage is more like a beginner tool. Uh, the word count, the content to code ratio, actually 9% is very poor content to code ratio. Um, the Fabicon that is showing in the SERPs, the images that are used, and there are some with, uh, that don't have an alt tag. Um, the links, in this case, everything's fine with those links. There are no translations, no microdata, no schema.org. If you find microdata or schema.org, we would display them here um, and also give you some tips on what else you might be missing out on. If you're missing none, if you have none, I can kind of give you all of them. So I, I would need to see, hey, I'm a restaurant and I'm only giving my address right now, I can say, hey, you should also have the star rating, your opening times, maybe a picture or whatever. So um, we're also displaying this in here if you're doing, if you're using microdata. Um, there's a sitemap, a link in the robust.txt file that should be that should be done actually. Um, my type is all okay. You also have a mind type report. This will help you identify soft form for errors. So maybe a PDF document that is actually as sending an HTML header, which is not good um, because the browser is expecting uh, something different. Um, and uh, IP canonicalization. Oh, this is a very, very funny mistake that we're right here. So I can go to this URL. Um, and you can see this is the the same URL as DeutscheBank.com, and even if I link to something, <laughs> you can see that it, it stays on that uh, IP address. So if I if I want to do uh, do a little bit, um, if I want to, what, what do you say? If I want to be an asshole, you know, I'm going to link to Deutsche Bahn uh, and link to this uh, this IP address, and maybe uh, get Google uh, a little bit com uh, confused on, on what's going on. Um, this should definitely not happen. Um, okay, da, 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 da. As you can see a lot of stuff in here. Compression, there's no compression. It's really just one click of a button, so you definitely have compression on. Um, they have two JavaScript, 10 and like script blocks. That's a lot. That's what we say in uh, the warning, warning sign here. Um, then the five cookies. We can see the cookies uh, they're setting. Um, the mobile version, mobile is very important. They're not using viewport, so that's not good, but they seem to use the very response header. But they also don't have an Apple Touch icon, so if I'm moving this, uh, this uh, URL on my Apple uh, phone screen, you know, which icon would be shown in this case, it would be none, uh, which is not good. But you can see how granular we are with our, um, with our, uh, and fail in, uh, with our, um, <laughs> uh, what's the English word? Recommendations. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, also, some social statistics. So you can see it's getting shared quite a lot on Facebook and also getting some shares on Twitter. But the Facebook preview looks pretty poor. Why? Because it's missing the open graph tags. And this is very easy because with the OG uh, doppelpunkt, OG, what's the open graph tag? Doppelpunkt? Doppelpunkt? Um, dos puntos. Dos puntos? Mm -hmm. 
an, an image on here. There's just really one line of code you're going to include in your header. At, at this point, I have a, an image. I can put a description in here, a different uh, title tag. So this could be uh, a lot more pimp just using the open graph tags, which they are not using. Um, also, with Twitter and Google Plus, I can also have this in here. Maybe they have an iTunes app. Blah, blah, blah. So you can see this is very comprehensive and showing you all the stuff that might be going wrong with that URL. So um, it's very easy, um, and as I said, you can use it with any URLs as much as you want. This could also be your competitors. This could be just anything, any URL you would like. It has nothing to do with your uh, project in Zoom. And another tool you can use um, uh, independently from the URL that you're using here is the TFIDF um, tool, a tool that I could talk. Uh, just talking about this tool um, could be uh, could be a five-hour webinar, so I'm going to do it very, very quick. Um, so let's run a report real quick on SEO in the United Kingdom in English. Um, you can see we have all sorts of different markets and languages uh, we are using. Um, so we are, are also Spain and Spanish, but I couldn't understand it, so I'm, I'm yeah. kind of, <laughs> going to refrain from that. Um, but it's very important to have, this is the the country I'm optimizing for in that language. Uh, so in this case, I want to do uh, an analysis for SEO in the United Kingdom. And I'm going to create a TFIDF report. And let me explain real quick what we do. Basically, TFIDF is one, has been uh, one of the earliest ranking Ranking factor for Yandex. This was their form of page rank, indices of incoming links, and TFIDF, uh, just as well as Google, um, because it's not about SEO here. Um, TFIDF serves a lot of great purposes for search engines. Um, for example, with homonyms, um, so a word that has different meanings. Um, so search engines look at the context on when a uh, keyword is actually used within the text to actually re refer from that what is what is it talking about. So if I'm using the word Java in, in the context of programming language, C Sharp, C++, Java, um, I know it's about Java, the programming language. If I'm, if I'm using Java in the context of beach, Bali, surfing, cocktails, I'm talking about the island of Java, and if I'm using Java in the context of coffee, tasting, coffee bean, it's probably Java, yeah. the coffee. Um, so this is how search engines actually, uh, they do this with TFIDF, basically see what's the context, what this keyword is, in, uh, is being used in, and to really see, okay, if somebody's searching for program language Java, this is also uh, a page that could show up in those results, but not a page that is talking about Java with beaches and that stuff because it's really about uh, probably a travel site. Um, and also, back when I started doing SEO in, in 90, 97, 98 with Alta Vista, um, basically grew up uh, with Google when Google started in Germany in 2000. Um, but before I was optimizing for Yahoo and Alta Vista, and there it was all about keyword density. So it was whoever has the most iteration of a particular keyword on its page, they got the highest search results. And you could even do this with white, uh, white font. Uh, on a white background, uh, just as many uh, instances of this keyword uh, have to be put on the page, and that worked incredibly well. Google came with the link-based approach, which was awesome, but this still, they had to find um, the most relevant results when it's not necessarily about links, and this is when we are in the long tail. Um, so this is not about short tail queries, especially with long tail queries. Um, for example, um, you could have smartphone um, for left-handers, um, big display, um, HD camera, or whatever. So a long tail query that Google sees very seldomly, maybe even like five or ten times a month, but they still want to have a very good result. So what they do is basically, um, I have that query now with five, four, six words, what I just said, and now I have 500,000 pages in my index that could potentially rank for those six keywords. Um, so, and they always favor the pages that seem to be the most holistic result, so that are talking about, have a lot of different other keywords that actually pages are talking about that are using um, those keywords, especially in comparison to a page that might have only this six uh, keywords, 
a hundred times over on the page. So nothing else, only those six keywords I'm searching for a hundred times over. That's a very poor result. This is keyword spam. And with the, with the help of TFIDF, they can really say what's a holistic um, page. So basically really talking holistic about this topic and what is a page that is just abusing uh, me and trying to, to get in the system. Um, and what we did with, with TFIDF is basically reverse engineering um, that algorithm. I can show you how this works. So we basically search for SEO. And actually ranking for SEO in the UK. So they're ranking very well. So they must be doing something very good. And so I'm extracting all the terms from these pages. And out of those, I extract the unique terms. And this comes down to... 4,157 unique terms that are being used on pages that are ranking well for the term SEO. And out of those, we weigh the top 500. As you can see here, uh, Brighton SEO, which is very big in the UK and also very current. This is why it's showing up here. Uh, Mars, SEO, Googlebot, optimization, canonical, page rank, spider, keyword, penalized, spam, and next. So it seems to make a lot of sense. But we still got to work a little bit with this result um, with the proof keyword filter because there might be um, keywords in here which allegedly show a very strong signal to Google that is very important for ranking with SEO, but they're only used on a couple of pages or they are uh, also current result. And this is a very easy current result, bright and SEO. So I think it's not important to mention bright and SEO to rank well for SEO in the UK. This is a current thing, and this is why we've got to work with the proof keyword filter. So you can see you filter down the result, and you want to go down to maybe like five or six bubbles. Right now, see stays there, which is very weird. Probably because, um, to be fair, uh, because it just happened, so you have a lot of pages showing up for that stuff, so it's okay. But by the eyes of that, SEO, optimization, engines, engine, marketing, um, Seems to be all right. So let's go in here, Google Code UK, search for SEO, and then um, have uh, um, brand SEO is in the ranking yet. For example, here SEO Morocco UK. That's an SEO consultancy here in the UK. And let's say I'm the wow. <laughs> okay, that's a very horrible website. That's I'm sorry for that. Um, but. I'm the SEO now for this site and want to see, okay, how fair do, how do I fare um, in comparison to all the other ones? So I can just put it in here and compare the results and see what keywords I might be missing. Um, and there's actually quite a couple of them. Um, so I'm not using Brighton SEO, haha, <laughs> but still, I wouldn't say this is very important. I'm not using Bing on there. It's probably just optimizing for Google. Um, is not the way to go, and they're also not using marketing. And SEO is definitely a marketing tactic. Yeah. Um, uh, also, not mentioning analytics, optimization. That's US yeah, word. That's there. okay. Not not follow well. Follow Google Bot. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of things uh, in here. But as I said, it's not about you know optimizing. You know, using all those keywords and basically it's doing it exactly like this no. line that goes down here. This is not how it's worse. Uh, how it's being used. It's really about keyword inspiration, basically finding some keywords that I might be missing that may seem to make sense um, to include in here. What about if you are above the orange? Oh, yeah. Uh, I can show you with this uh, a great question with uh, the detailed analysis you can jump into as well. Um, you can see three different blues in here. The one is the TFIDF average for the complete set, so for all URLs. Um, the light blue is the TFIDF, uh, so the average TFIDF score on all documents that have this term uh, on the website. And then you have the spam line above. Um, and so if I want to optimize for a particular keyword, I also always want to be in this turquoise area. Do you say turquoise, or what is it in Spain? What's that called um, in Spain? Turquesa. Turquesa. But so, actually, it's more green. <laughs> okay, no, it's green, but I like turquesa. Uh, uh, in this uh, turquesa color, yeah, because then I'm better than average, but below the spam line. Yeah. Uh, in this case, you can see, for example, here, this is the same. Uh, it's the same value, 1.88. You can see only the black, uh, the, the deep blue, and that means that all pages that are ranking well for SEO are also using SEO on the web page. Seems to make a lot of sense, right? Um, so, but this is like the stuff I'm actually 
um, trying to find because as you can see with Brighton SEO, it's only about like one fifth. One of the more pages that are working well for SEO actually mention Brighton SEO, yeah. so this can't be a category term here, right? Um, um, yeah, definitely not um, that important. Google, on the other hand, again, very important. You should definitely mention Google. Um, with Bing, not so much, but it's still over half of it, so I can still be working. And you can also um, jump into the text assistant, and let's. Um, um, so basically, uh, what was the SEO smart? So what, what was the URL I just had? The one you just used? Yeah. Um, oh, that's really horrible. I don't remember. SEO. Maybe we we'll just take another one. Maybe no, Kaizen yeah, Search. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We we'll take Kaizen Search Co UK. It looks a little bit better. Well, they don't work with yeah. it, so it's okay. Uh, so we. Ah, no. Uh, what I do is. I'm sorry. Copy and pasting all that text on that one page. Pasting it in. Oh, oh. oh Jesus. Pasting it in here. And then I can analyze that text. Esto es muy útil, sobre todo si tenéis que hacer un texto nuevo para un nuevo artículo o aumento de contenido. Copiáis y pegáis el texto y os vamos dando algunos consejos de palabras que podríais añadir y las que debéis quitar. Por ejemplo, las que están en rojo las tenéis que quitar. Yeah. Ahora os lo explicarán mejor allá. I know I'm really I'm using now the Brighton SEO. I got think if I'm using the keyword now, as you can see, it, yeah. it disappears from here. It comes. You can actually use it more often. Um, never been using it too often, so let's let's say it's 19, 1998 again. Ooh. Let's see how you are. Okay. So now I'm spamming with right. Let's see what that's And also, I can jump back to the analysis and basically see. My text that I just make, and you can see that I'm now about this term life of right and SEO, as well as the other URL I've pointed in here, so I can also do some stuff like, okay, this is a URL which has a very, very good text about this topic I want to write about, so I can basically see if do I get like uh, similar results um, with that. So um, this is how you can use um, this tool. You can also take a look at the competition. Uh, but as I said, this is a very, very, very short overview of the tool. It's actually much more complex. Um, and the, what I said is we, I can do a whole day of a TFIDF webinar, and this is just really 10 minutes. We have um, more than 116 uh, different Yeah, yeah right? and especially TFIDF in itself, yeah. um, because I got a lot of um, good cases, uh, a lot of good cases um, how, you, uh, how you can uh, use uh, TFIDF. Um, and um, yeah. That's about it. I, I'm already, I'm already way over it. So, but I hope it was still uh, very informative for you guys. Uh, if, if, yeah, the one thing is, uh, I think I still got to mention. Um, um, you can use this software for free. If you have less than 100 URLs, you're more than welcome to use the software for free. This yeah. is why on page A, what on page R is there for. It's actually the whole tool. There's no test version. There's nothing. It's the it's the same tool everybody has, so you have the full power of onpage.org, just limited to 100 URLs. And this is really what onpage.org is about, is really about how much URLs do you need, how many projects, how many keywords, how many people uh, should have access to that data. This is basically how the bigger packages fare. But um, everybody has the same software. So even with the free account, you can also use TFIDF as well as the focus tool, although those are limited to five requests a month because we want to keep it for free forever and this actually costs a lot of money. So we got to be a, a little bit careful with that <laughs> because we've got a lot of free clients too. Um, and um, but other than that, you can use it for free, and um, which is very important. Uh, starting with a pro account, you can change the URL every 36 hours. Yeah. Um, so you, like basically with a normal pro account, you could in one month you could check 20 um, web projects yeah, with each 50,000 URLs. And the unique thing uh, about us, um, which I really love, is that we have unlimited recrawls. So if you have um, 50,000 URLs, URLs. It really doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't deplete. Um, it really doesn't matter how often you recrawl your website. I just want to have the maximum amount of pages per crawling, and within this limit, you can recrawl for free. Um, if you have over 20 million pages, 
please don't recrawl every day. Uh, so you know how this works. Um, but this is why we have the focus too, so you don't need to recrawl every day with such a big website. Uh, but you potentially could, um, and uh, this is why we want to make it as fair um, as possible for anyone and not thinking about, oh my god, I wait for another week because, you know, it depletes and I would have to buy credits and all that shit. No, I hate that. Uh, unlimited recrawls for everyone. Um, this is our model. It sounds like Christmas, right? Absolutely. <laughs> losing it. Um, so, um, yeah, I hope uh, this was informative. I hope the English uh, was uh, well enough, and uh, I hope you uh, want to play a little bit around with the tool. As I said, it's free, so uh, welcome to just use it. Marcus. So uh, wow, thanks thanks for this amazing webinar, uh, Marcus. I, I think everybody here finds I, I think everybody here finds on Page.org an incredible tool. We have seen how powerful and useful this tool is. We have a question, a question from Amalia. Uh, she, she says, uh, "Can this software be used for blogs as well?" For what? For what? Can this software be used for blogs as well? Uh, blogs, any any URL. So basically, we do quality management for HTML code. And 99.5 if for whatever. So any whatever, right? I mean, you can use this software, of yeah. course, of course. Sobre todo interesante la herramienta que hemos enseñado al final, TFIDF, para el blog. Está muy bien para el contenido, vaya. Eh, me, gustaría, me gustaría, Alicia, que, que explicases, que dijeses en inglés, eh, en español, eh, la parte que ha dicho de que, es, de que hay una manera de hacer, utilizarlo gratuito, toda esta herramienta, porque seguramente mucha gente querrá tenerlo claro. Tener un, o sea, un resumen de, de la herramienta TF, eh, TFIDF. Sí, lo que comentaba de que era para que de que era gratuita o de que se podía realizar una prueba gratuita de toda esta Exacto. herramienta. A ver, tenemos varios planes, pero tenemos una, una cuenta que es gratuita y es ilimitada, o sea, no tiene ningún tipo de permanencia ni, ni es una prueba, simplemente es una cuenta gratuita con la que podéis utilizar todas las herramientas que hay dentro, que son más de 160 herramientas distintas. Lo único... Hay unas distintas, ¿no? <ríe> lo único que diferencia esta cuenta de una de pago es el límite de, de URLs, vaya. Vas a poder analizar eh, tu dominio, tu, tu sitio web, pero hasta un máximo de 100 páginas, 100 URLs, y es lo único que, que diferencia esa de una de pago. Así que si queréis, vaya, probarla, a ver si os gusta, tenéis dudas, empezar con el análisis de las primeras 100 URLs, es una herramienta interesante para vosotros. Muy bien. Más eh, nada. Eh... No tenemos ninguna, ninguna otra pregunta. We don't have any questions uh, right now. So uh, uh, we have a lot of compliments. Uh, it's a it's a very inter interesting tool and seems to seem so easy to use it. Thanks so much, Marcus and Alicia. This is a message from from Mar. Uh, thanks a lot. A message from Amalia. Great content. Hope to get the video to have a look again. That's a message from Cesar. Thank you, Marcus. Great software. Message from Natalia. Bueno, uh, uh, un montón de felicitaciones y creo que ha gustado mucho uh, este webinar. Um, lo vamos a dejar aquí, si os parece. Um, tenemos, uh, tendremos este vídeo, tendremos este vídeo para que lo pueda ver uh, todo el mundo, todo el mundo apuntado a la lista de SEO. Y bueno. Uh, También en castellano, ¿no? En subtítulos, así la gente se queda con toda la información, ¿no? Ah, bueno, eso estaría muy bien. Podemos no, generar no, 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 no. unos títulos y es, es, es buena idea, es buena idea. Lo, lo haremos. So, uh, Marcus, uh, Marcus and Alicia, such, such a pleasure and an honor to have you here on Quantos One on this, this great uh, challenge about uh, 100 uh, webinars in 100 days. That's uh, a really great big challenge. It has been a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to, to be able to show a tool. Thank you very much, uh, everyone Gracias. that has been uh, that has been watching. Um, of course, and you can say in Spanish. Yeah, Gracias a todos y hasta la próxima. Gracias a todos y hasta la próxima. <laughs> Ah, I, by the way, by the way, it's great your hoodie about uh, ECO Oktoberfest. It's a, a really great 
who did you have there? <laughs> Ahí está. <laughs> Great, fantastic. Eh, eh, bye bye, goodbye, have a, a good weekend. Muy bien, pues eh, hasta aquí. Este ha sido otro webinar un poco especial en inglés, pero fantástico, merecía mucho la pena ver esta herramienta, onpage.org, ya sabéis que podéis tener una prueba gratuita, podéis utilizarlo con una limitación que la verdad nos da también mucha, mucha potencia. Y ya tenemos otro webinar más, muchas gracias a todos, a los que me estáis felicitando por, por el webinar. Y estos son nuestros patrocinadores, son los que están haciendo posible que llevemos a cabo nuestro reto de 100 webinars en 100 días. Y este es nuestro Twitter, arroba cuando os curso, y seguimos, seguimos adelante con webinars y dando mucha caña. Un saludo a todos, muy buenas tardes, muchas gracias por estar ahí. Hasta la próxima.